Welcome. We are in a study called Lesser Known People of the Bible. And yesterday we started a two-day series on a man named Jehu. I don't have time to give you all that we gave you yesterday on Jehu, but God told Elijah to anoint Jehu as a prophet. Elisha eventually became the one to follow through on that, uh, no doubt by the command of Elijah per God. And uh, Jehu was responsible for killing Joram, the son of Ahab, as well as uh, Azariah, the king of Judah. And then he went down and killed Jezebel in Jezreel. And so that's where we left it yesterday. There's a whole other chapter here that we're going to cover, 2 Kings chapter number 10. I encourage you to follow along in your Bible so that you can see what we're talking about. This has about three or four different sections of activity that Jehu is carrying out. And what God is using Jehu to do is completely clean house from all the terrible wickedness of Ahab and Jezebel. So let's start reading in verse 1 of 2 Kings 10. And Ahab had 70 sons in Samaria. And Jehu wrote letters and sent to Samaria under the rulers of Jezreel to the elders and to them that brought up Ahab's children, saying. So Jehu writes letters to all the people that helped raise up or, you know, raise the 70 sons of Ahab. And this is what this letter said. Verse 2, Now as soon as this letter cometh to you, seeing your master's sons are with you, and there are with you chariots and horses, a fenced city also, and armor, look even out the best and meetest of your master's sons, and set him on his father's throne, and fight for your master's house. So <laughs> Jehu does not play games. He writes a letter, and this is what it says, if you didn't follow that. Hey, all you people that raised up the 70 sons of Ahab, here's what I want you to do. You have chariots, you have horses, and you have armor. Find the best of Ahab's sons and make them your king and put the armor on them, put them in the chariots with the horses, and I'm coming to fight them. And we're going to see who survives. So Jehu, not kidding around here. Verse three, look even now. Oh, we read that. Verse four, but they were exceedingly afraid and said, behold, two kings stood not before him. How then shall we stand? And the two kings he's talking about are Joram and Ahaziah. So they said, look, if Joram and Ahaziah couldn't stand against Jehu, how are we ever going to do it? Verse 5, And he that was over the house, and he that was over the city, the elders also, and the bringers up of the children, sent to Jehu, saying, so this is the people's response to Jehu, We are thy servants, and will do all that thou shalt bid us. So they immediately wave the right white flag of surrender. We will not make any king. Do thou that which is good in thine eyes. So they said, look, we submit to you. We surrender to you. Uh, we're not going to establish a king. We, we're going to let you do whatever it is you want to do here. Then he wrote a letter the second time to them saying, If ye be mine, and if ye will hearken unto my voice, take ye the heads of the men your master's sons, and come to me to Jezreel by tomorrow this time. Now the king's sons, being 70 persons, were with the great men of the city, which brought them up. So Jehu says, okay, you're going to do whatever I tell you to do? All right, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. In 24 hours, I want the 70 heads of the 70 sons of Ahab brought to Jezreel. 24 hours. The clock starts now. Verse 7, and it came to pass when the letter came to them that they took the king's sons and slew 70 persons. So they did exactly what Jehu told them to do and put their heads in baskets and sent him them to Jezreel. So they kill the 70 sons of Ahab, put those 70 heads in baskets and send them to Jezreel. Verse eight, and there came a messenger and told him saying, they have brought the heads of the king's sons. And he said, lay ye them in two heaps at the entering in of the gate until morning. 
So he says, okay, go ahead and dump them out and make two piles of heads. I guess two piles of 35 heads apiece and leave them there until the morning. And it came to pass in the morning that he went out and stood and said to all the people, ye be righteous. Behold, I conspired against my master and slew him. But who slew all these? So Jehu's saying, look, I may have rose up against Ahab tyrannically and as a traitorous captain, but look here, the 70 heads of his sons are here. I didn't do this. Who did all this? So he's trying to say, look, I'm not the only person who hated Ahab. Know now that there shall fall unto the earth nothing of the word of the Lord, which the Lord spake concerning the house of Ahab. For the Lord hath done that which he spake by his servant Elijah. So Jehu slew all that remained of the house of Ahab in Jezreel, and all his great men and his kinsfolks and his priests, until he left him none remaining. So Jehu takes it upon himself, after killing the seventy sons, to kill every last living descendant of Ahab. Eliminates him from the face of the earth. Today, July 7th, 2023, there is not a single human being on earth that descended from Ahab. They're gone. Jehu killed all of them. Verse 12, and he arose and departed. So here's another story. That's the first story of the 70 heads. He arose and departed and came to Samaria. And as he was at the shearing house in the way, Jehu met with the brethren of Ahaziah, king of Judah, and said, Who are ye? So remember Ahaziah, he killed yesterday in chapter 9. So he comes across the brothers of Ahaziah, and he says, Who are you? And they answered, We are the brethren of Ahaziah. And we go down to salute the children of the king and the children of the queen. So he's seemingly talking about Ahab and Jezebel. Uh, and he said, Take them alive. And they took them alive and slew them at the pit of the shearing house. Even two and forty men, neither left he any of them. So he said, you're not going anywhere to salute anybody. Uh, you are going to die here. And he kills 42 brothers of Ahaziah. And when he was departed thence, here's the third story. He lighted on Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, coming to meet him. And he saluted him and said to him, Is thine heart right as my heart is with thy heart? And Jehonadab answered, It is. If it be, give me thine hand. And he gave him his hand, and he took him up into the chariot. So here comes Jehonadab, and he greets Jehu. He's looking for some mercy. And Jehonadab is asked by Jehu, Is your heart right? My heart's right with you. Is your heart right with me? Jehonadab says, Yes, it is. So he brings Jehonadab into the chariot. Verse 16, And he said, Come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So what is the zeal of Jehu for the Lord? Well, killing Ahaziah and Joram, killing Jezebel, killing the 70 sons of Ahab, killing the 42 sons of Azariah. And now here, uh, he, he says, when he came to Samaria, come now, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariot. And when he came to Samaria, he slew all that remained unto Ahab in Samaria till he had destroyed him, according to the saying of the Lord, which he spake to Elijah. So this man, uh, Jehonadab, sees Ahab, or I'm sorry, Jehu now go to, to Samaria, kill all the remaining descendants of Ahab in Samaria, and then Jehonadab himself dies. Now, story number four, Jehu gathered all the people together and said unto them, Ahab served Baal a little, but Jehu shall serve him much. Now this might mislead us here, uh, but we're going to be told in a second, Jehu is, is setting up these people. He is going to destroy Baal worship in the kingdom of Israel. He says, verse 19, Now therefore call unto me all the prophets of Baal, all his servants and all his priests. Let none be wanting, meaning call everybody, don't leave anybody behind. For I have a great sacrifice to do to Baal. Whosoever shall be wanting, he shall not live. So if you don't show up to this Baal sacrifice, you're going to die. But Jehu did it in subtlety 
to the intent that he might destroy the worshipers of Baal. So we're told, we're let in on this, that he's setting these people up in order to destroy them. And Jehu said, proclaim a solemn assembly for Baal. And they proclaimed it. And Jehu sent through all Israel, and all the worshipers of Baal came, so that there was not a man left that came not. And they came into the house of Baal, and the house of Baal was full from one end to another. And he said unto them that was over the vestry, Bring forth vestments for all the worshipers of Baal. And he brought them forth vestments. So here Jehu has all the worshipers of Baal in the temple of Baal, and he's got the priest of Baal, and he says, hey, bring the vestments, uh, or maybe you would consider maybe the Lord's Supper, the, the bread and the juice. Bring those things to the people. And Jehu went, and Jehonadab, the son of Rechab, into the house of Baal, and said unto the worshipers of Baal, Search and look that there be here with you none of the servants of the Lord, but worshipers of Baal only. I think I did just say that he killed Jehonadab. Clearly not. He's still alive here. So he wants to make sure he doesn't accidentally kill any worshipers of the Lord. Verse 24, And when they went in to offer sacrifices and burnt offerings, Jehu appointed fourscore men without, that's eighty men, and said, If any of the men whom I have brought into your hands escape, he that letteth him go, his life shall be for the life of him. And it came to pass, as soon as he had made an end of offering the burnt offering, that Jehu said to the guard and to the captains, Go in and slay them. Let none come forth. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and the guard and the captains cast them out and went to the city of the house of Baal. So these 80 men that Jehu hires, they're told on his command to enter the temple kill everybody in there and if anybody was let free or escaped the person that let them go or allowed them to escape he would die in their place so they go in and they kill everyone verse 26 and they brought forth the images out of the house of Baal and burned them and they break down the image of Baal and break down the house of Baal and made it a drought house unto this day draft house probably unto this day Thus Jehu destroyed Baal out of Israel. You could summarize the life of Jehu with that verse right there, verse 28. Jehu's rid the entire nation of Ahab, Jezebel, all of their descendants in Israel and Samaria, and then he kills all the worshipers of Baal, destroys all of the temple of Baal and the worship there, and gets rid of everything and everybody. But notice here, how be it from the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin, Jehu departed not from after them, to wit, the golden calves that were in Bethel and that were in Dan. So Jehu, even though he destroys the worship of Baal in Israel, he still allows idolatry to exist. And instead of calling people back to Jerusalem, uh, to the temple to worship, he allows them to keep the high places and to keep their, their golden images and worship them instead. And the Lord said unto Jehu, so this is the Lord's commendation and reward for what Jehu's done. Because thou hast done well in executing that which was right in mine eyes, and thou hast done unto the house of Ahab according to all that was in my heart, Thy children of the fourth generation shall sit on the throne of Israel. So God promises that the next four kings would be the descendants of Jehu. So five generations of Jehu and his sons and grandsons and so forth are going to lead the nation of Israel. But Jehu took no heed to walk in the law of the Lord God of Israel with all his heart. For he departed not from the sins of Jeroboam, which made Israel to sin. In those days the Lord began to cut Israel short, and Hazael smote them in all the coasts of Israel, from Jordan eastward, all the land of Gilead, the Gadites and the Reubenites and the Manassites, and uh, from Aror, which is by the river Arnon, even Gilead and Bashan. Now the rest of the acts of Jehu and all that he did and all his might, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? And Jehu slept with his fathers, and they buried him in Samaria, and Jehoahaz, his son, reigned in his stead. And the time that Jehu reigned over Israel and Samaria was 20 and 8 years. And so that's all we're going to talk about, uh, Jehu, there. Uh, 
quite a guy, huh? Quite a bloody man. I don't know if there is a more bloody man in all of Scripture than Jehu, but he did some incredible things. He was a rough guy. I don't know if anybody would like him. Uh, we would be put off by him. But he was the man that was needed to do the job that God needed done at that time. And he stepped up and he did what the Lord said. But he didn't come quite far enough, did he? He destroyed Baal worship in Israel, but he didn't destroy idolatry in Israel. And so a couple thoughts here. Number one, God uses whoever he wants to use. You and I don't get to tell him who he can and cannot use. Another thing is, God can use the most unusual of people to accomplish his will and get his work done. And that's what happened here with Jehu. Also, even though someone may do excellently in one area, they might still fail in another area. Someone said it this way, the best of men are men at best. So there's Jehu. I hope you've enjoyed learning about him. If you didn't hear yesterday's, uh, it's there uploaded in the archives under this particular series. I hope you'll find it and listen to it. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.